Hey everybody, it's Steph Davis here from FlipThisWholesaler.net. I have a new Q&A video to share with you guys today. This one is going to be about um, direct mail marketing and building a better or more targeted list. So the email that I received from Shonda says, Hi Steph, I just obtained a list of vacant homes in my city. I want to start a direct mail campaign, but there are over 1,500 addresses on the list and I am working on an extremely tight budget. Do you have any suggestions on how to get the most bang for my buck when deciding which addresses to mail to? I only have a, a couple excuse me, a couple hundred bucks to work with. Thanks for your help, Shonda. All right, Shonda, that is an excellent question. Uh, direct mail marketing is a fantastic way to find motivated sellers and to get deals under contract. However, it is not cheap, as you guys probably know. Um, you know, postage is not cheap these days. So if you are, especially if you're working on a shoestring budget, there are some things that you can do to narrow your list and to ensure that you're getting the best bang for your buck out of your marketing dollars that you can. You don't want to be wasting money on postage if you're sending it to a lead where there's no possibility that it could become a deal. So um, I'm going to hop over to, and I, I do all of this on my county's uh, public records websites, and it's different in every county, but most in most areas you can look up this information online. Um, if you don't know which of your um, county's public record sites are online, you go to um, this website here, it's netronline.com, and if you go to the section, the public records online section, click on that, and you plug in your um, city and state or a zip code, and so let's do Tampa, Florida, and click convert, and I'm going to click on the county, this is Hillsborough County, so I'm going to click on that, and up will pop all of the uh, Hillsborough, the county uh, records websites for Hillsborough County. So there's the property appraiser, recorder, tax collector, uh, county mapping. Um, and I use these. If you have, if these are available in your area, I really, really highly suggest getting to, you know, spend a weekend or spend a couple of days going through these sites and really getting to know them. You can find so much um, really useful information from uh, particularly the ones that I use are the property appraiser website and the county clerk um, uh, the county recorder website I'm on there all the time and I've been using the um, those sites in Hillsborough County for I don't know since 2006 I guess and I'm still I was just doing some searches on there on the recorders site the other day and just figured out a new way to uh, do a search for a particular list. Um, so I strongly suggest that you get to know the ins and outs of your county public records websites if they are available because like I said they can be a wealth of information. I am able to pull all different types of possible motivated seller lists. I can do evictions, probates, list pendants, tax delinquent. I find buyers, tons of buyers using these websites as well. So it's worth your time if it takes, you know, they can take a little while to figure out at first if, if you've never been on there and you have absolutely no clue what information you can obtain. But if you spend some time poking around there, spend a couple hours a day, it will be well worth your time. So um, back to the, uh, the, the question and this person has, Shonda has a list of vacant homes. I don't know if this is from uh, driving for dollars or how she got the list of vacant homes, but the very first thing that I do, let's say I go out driving for dollars and I come back with a list of properties. The very first thing that I want to look for is to see who owns it and to weed out all of the bank owned properties. So I just go to um, my, the county property appraiser website and put in an address and I have a couple of examples that I'm going to go over here. Um, this is 10926 Arden A-R-D-E-N. and you click, uh, you enter that in there and it pops up that it's uh, Wells Fargo so I'm not going to bother to mail to bank owned properties or if it's a HUD home and I know there'll be some people who say well can I you know mail to the bank and try and negotiate with them good luck doing that I don't know of anyone who has ever had any luck um, you know trying to contact the bank before it goes to uh, before it gets on the MLS they have a certain protocol most bank banks have a certain protocol of when a property is foreclosed on of what exactly happens and most of the time it's going to end up on the MLS so 
if I see a lead like this where Wells Fargo or Bank of America or what have you pops up, then I cross that off the list and I just save myself a stamp. All right, so the next piece of information that I want to find out before uh, sending off a direct mail piece to a lead is whether or not the property has equity. There is no point in wasting money on marketing dollars if you're marketing to leads that have little to no equity where you know even if they were motivated and wanted to sell way below market value they can't because they owe too much on the property so there are a couple of different ways to do this you may not be able to do this using your county's um, online record sites in some areas you can in some areas you can't but I'm just going to show you how I do it here in Hillsborough and Pinellas um, County also so I'm just going to go back to the basic search and show you another example. This is 2216 17th and I'm going to click on this record here. So again, the first thing that I'm going to look at is the owner and make sure that it's not a bank owned property, which it is not. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and take a look at the sales history to find out what is going on. So the first thing that I see here is that the current owner recently purchased this home just a couple of months ago. Uh, February of 2018 for $129,000. Now I know this area well and I know that I would have to, uh, this person basically paid retail, I know that I would have to get it uh, way less than what they just purchased it for. The chances of that happening or even ha the owner's ability to do that are slim to none. So this is probably going to be one that I'm going to skip over. But I just want to show you um, something else that I can do using my county, uh, the clerk website or the recorder's website is I can go do a search for this person's name and see if there are any mortgages on this home. So what I do is first I take a look at the legal description. So this is Mays Edition, Lot 16, Block 10. The reason why I do that is let's say this person owns 25 properties. When I go over to the clerk's website, I just want to focus on this particular property to see if there are any loans on it. So I need to know what the legal description is. Um, you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go over, let's see, let me first get his, grab his name. And we're going to cut and paste that into the, uh, the county clerk or recorder's website. So search records. And if you scroll down here, uh, all there is is just um, a deed and a mortgage. And if you see here the legal description like I was talking about, it's um, Mays Edition, Lot 16, Block 10. So um, I can click on this here, the mortgage file, and see that he took out a loan to purchase this property for $131,000. So right there, that tells me that I would be wasting my time unless I wanted to pay full market value for this home, which I do not. So this would be a lead because he, even if he was, say, extremely motivated and wanted to sell way below market value, he owes $131,000 on it. So this would be an example of a lead that I would skip over. All right, so let me just show you one more example here. I'm going to hop back over to the property appraiser website and let's look at 7508 Morning Glory. Oops. And I don't know why this box pops up, but it's really annoying. Um, let me click on this file here. And again, the first thing that I'm going to look at is the owner name to make sure that it's not a bank owned property. It is not. Then I'm going to scroll down to the sales history and it looks like this current owner purchased this property in July of 2011 for $25,000 which is extremely low for that area. So that is a good sign. So next I'm going to go over to the county clerk's um, website to see if there are any mortgages, were any mortgages taken out against this property. So again I'm going to look at the legal description um, it's Adamo Acres Subdivision Unit 2, Lot 14, Block 18. And then I'm going to just go and cut and paste her name into the county clerk website and see what's going on. Let's see. All right, so this pulls up a whole bunch of records. And this is where um, having the you know, looking at the legal description comes in because there's uh, there are a ton of different properties it looks like here. So I can actually sort this by legal description and it will put all of anything related to this particular property will be grouped together. And it is, which one was it again? 
Adamo Acres right here. Okay, so um, so you see here is the deed in uh, 2011 was the deed, and then there's a mortgage in 2011 as well when she purchased the property. And other than that, it doesn't look like there are any other loans taken out against this. So um, let me click on this and see. Looks like she took out a mortgage for 22,500 back in 2011. So this would be an example of a lead that I would definitely send off a direct mail piece to. There's plenty of equity there. There are no other liens against the property and just that one mortgage for 22,500. Aside from that, she is an absentee owner, which I forgot to point out when I was over here on the um, property appraiser website. If you look here at the owner's mailing address, it is different from the, uh, the actual physical address of the property. So we've got equity there an absentee owner, a vacant property. And then I wanted to just throw in one more uh, way to refine your search or narrow narrow your search even more. Let's say you had a huge list of vacant properties and you went through this process, you got rid of the bank owned properties and you got rid of the over leveraged homes or the ones with no equity and you still have a huge list and you want to narrow it even more. If you're you know, like Shonda who said that she is working on a shoestring budget, you want to make sure you get the most bang for your buck out of every single direct mail piece that you send out. So one additional step that you can add, and again, it's going to depend on what county you are in, whether or not you can do this online like this, or you might have to go to a different website to do it. But here in Hillsborough County, what I can do is go up to this, see where it says tax collector, and I can click on that and it will tell me whether or not the owner is uh, current on their taxes. And in this case, this owner is uh, two years behind. And that makes the lead all that more attractive to me. So now I've got an absentee owner with a vacant property who has plenty of equity and is delinquent in their taxes. That is a, a really strong lead. And if you take the time, if you're in the situation like Shonda, where you are, you know, you don't have a lot of cash to work with, maybe you can't afford to buy leads, or maybe you have a huge list of leads, but you can't afford to send mail out to all of them. If you you know get familiar with your county online records or you can even go down to the uh, recorder's office or the property appraiser office and do the research there if you have to. But if you're able to narrow your lists like this, you're going to end up with a much more powerful and targeted mail campaign than if you were just blasting out letters to every single one of those vacant properties and you're going to get a much better bang for your marketing dollar. Um, all right, well, Shonda, I hope that helped you and anyone else who's in a similar predicament. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them over on my blog at flipthiswholesaler.net. That is all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.